If you've never cruised before, you're probably curious about what to expect on port days and how to prepare for them. Unlike sea days when the ship is out at sea and passengers stay on the ship without getting off at land, port days are those when the ship stops at one of the ports of call on your itinerary. When you booked your cruise, you likely selected your itinerary partly because of the planned ports of call. Those are probably places that you want to visit. So this is your chance to get out and explore and see the world. And that's the beauty of cruising. Before disembarking at a port of call though, here are a few things to know in order to prepare. First, it's good to know what's needed to disembark on port days. You'll need your ship card in order to get off or disembark the ship at a port of call. All cruise lines call it something different. Royal Caribbean calls theirs a sea pass, Carnival calls theirs a sail and sign card, and other cruise lines like Virgin Voyages, they don't use a physical card at all, but rather a bracelet with a digital fob. Ship card is generally used as your stateroom key, and it's also used to make purchases and to charge to your stateroom account during your cruise. Now you will not be allowed to get off the ship without your card getting scanned, because this is how the cruise line keeps track of which passengers are on and off the ship at any given time. Cruisers generally won't have to go through any scanner to exit the ship. The security crew will simply scan your ship card and allow you to disembark. Most ports do not allow cruisers to take food off the ship unless it is in its sealed original container, like a packaged granola bar, for example. Now let's talk about the documents that you're going to need to get back on the ship. While you generally only need that ship card to exit the ship, you'll need the ship card and identification to get back on. Now in some cases, like with the cruise line's private islands, you may only need your ship card. If this is all confusing though, don't fret. The cruise line will almost always make announcements on port days, notifying cruisers of what you need, and it never hurts to always have identification with you, regardless of even if it is a pr private island. If you're traveling with children, their ship card and birth certificate, original or copy, or are generally acceptable for embarking back on the ship on port days. Now, because passports aren't always needed to cruise, you may not have one. Regardless, you typically only need a valid government issued ID and that ship card to get back on the ship. Now, of course, always consult your cruise documents and listen for those announcements for guidance on what's needed. But this generally holds true in most cases and at most ports. Do you need to bring your passport with you to cruise ports? If you're on a closed loop sailing, meaning you are a US citizen on a sailing that starts and ends at the same US port of embarkation, you do not always need your passport, even if you're calling upon international destinations. Personally, I always bring a copy of my passport, but then my driver's license with me, and I leave the passport back in my stateroom safe. Because I worry about losing my passport at port or having it stolen. Now, of course, there is a chance that I could miss the ship because I don't get back on time and I'll need my passport. But I know if that happens, the cruise line will retrieve my passport from my stateroom safe. They'll leave it at the pier with the port agent for me to retrieve. And then I have to figure out how to get myself back home or to the next port of call. But before you even get off the ship, let's back it up a little bit and talk about preparing for disembarkation on port days. Before you even step foot off the ship, here are some important things just to make note of and consider. The most important thing, without a doubt, is make note of that return to ship time. The cruise line app will specify the times of that day's port of call, and this is critically important because this tells you not just the estimated arrival time that the ship plans to dock at the port where cruisers will disembark, but the most important piece of information is the return to ship time. You always want to make note of this because that ship will not wait for you if you're late to return, unless you're on a cruise-sponsored excursion that runs late. For everyone else though, if you miss the ship, it's gone without you. So always know that return to ship time. And note that Cruise Line app, once you're disconnected from the Wi-Fi and your app port, doesn't always work. It's also important to note local time versus ship time. Note that the ship time may vary from local port time. The ship always goes by ship time, so be careful to note any differences. This is especially true if you get off the ship, your phone automatically updates the time on the phone once you're at port and switches to the prevailing local time, because the local time can be different than ship time. Some cruisers choose to disable their phone's auto update feature to ensure that it always stays in sync with ship time. Now, whatever method you choose, just always know that local time can differ from ship time and you never, never, never want to miss that return to ship time. As a general rule, I personally aim to get back to port at least two hours before that return time, just out of an abundance of caution. That allows for buffer in case something goes wrong, I hit traffic or something like that, or if I screw up and I miss a time difference. You'll also want to note potential time differences when you're booking and planning excursions. I once almost missed an excursion in Puerto Plata because I didn't account for that one hour time difference between my ship time, which was Eastern Standard Time, and Dominican time, which is AST, and I showed up almost an hour late. 
Another thing to make note of is excursion details. If you booked an excursion, you'll want to confirm times and note the meeting specifics. Now, if you book an excursion through the cruise line, you'll likely receive tickets or information for your excursion delivered to your stateroom the evening before. Although some cruise lines now offer digital tickets via their app only. These tickets will provide the specifics of your excursion, including the meeting time and location and all of the specifics. If your port of call is a tender port, meaning cruisers do not exit the ship directly onto a pier, but instead are transported to the port area via tender boats or water shuttles, you may have a designated meeting location on the actual ship. Your group will then go together on that tender with the perk of priority disembarkation, which is a benefit the cruise line offers to incentivize cruisers to book through them instead of booking excursions independently. If the port of call is not a tender port, designated meeting location at the port terminal. These areas are usually pretty clearly marked, sometimes with numbers, and cruise line employees are almost always there to help guide you around. But make note of the fact that if you book an excursion independently on your own, including like a private driver from the port or even taking a taxi, you may have to exit the cruise terminal entirely and meet up with your driver or excursion provider outside of the terminal area. If booking an independent excursion, be cautious not to book it too early. Because while the cruise line will provide a time frame for that port of call and telling you the time they think you're going to arrive at that port, it's no guarantee. You may not be able to disembark at that scheduled and determined time. Why? Because cruise ships have to get clearance from local port authorities at each port of call. And sometimes emergencies with passengers or other issues may cause delays for various reasons. So always build in a little bit of time when you're booking your excursions. So where do you disembark the cruise ship? Cruise ships are pretty gigantic and they can be a challenge to navigate. Even for some independent excursion, tour providers may also only accept cash for payment if you didn't pay in advance. And this is also the case for many local taxi services. If you're porting at a beach location and you plan for a beach day, you'll likely want to bring your own towels. The great news is that the cruise lines do provide beach towels, but you'll wanna make sure you grab those before you disembark the ship as not all cruise lines give them to guests once you're off the ship. Royal Caribbean is the exception. They very conveniently have a location where they give out towels right off the ship after you disembark, but most of the cruise lines do not. So you wanna make sure you have those towels before you get off the ship. Now let's talk about the process of getting back on board after a port of call. As noted before, you'll need your ship card and your government ID to embark the ship at the conclusion of your port day. If you're traveling with children, you'll just need their ship card and birth certificate copy. Although don't be surprised if they don't ever get checked. I don't think ever in all of my cruises, anyone has literally asked me for my child's birth certificate at a port of call, but have it anyway. At the port terminal, local authorities will serve as the checkpoint to verify your ship card and ID, allowing you onto the pier. Once you return to the ship itself, cruise line security will scan your ship card to allow you back on board. If you bought alcohol at the port, which is a common occurrence since it's duty free, the cruise line will temporarily confiscate it for you at this point. But don't worry, you'll get it back upon final disembarkation or the last night of your cruise. You also will go through a metal detector and your items will be put through a scanner. It's kind of like going through TSA at the airport. If you have any forbidden items like fruits or vegetables, they will likely get confiscated or tossed. Now, if you like buying yummy treats at ports, like delicious rum cakes in the Bahamas, don't despair. Food is allowed, but only in its original factory sealed packaging. So that's what you need to know to prepare and plan for those fun port days. And while it sounds like a lot, once you do it just once or twice, it's like riding a bike or cruising on a ship. It's super easy. It doesn't require any thought and you really never forget how to do it.